Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Today, let's learn about the boundary of India and the major issue that is associated with the maritime uh, dispute of India. Okay, India has a land boundary as well as the maritime boundary. Being the seventh largest country in the world, India has obviously the long coastline as well as the long the land boundary okay see india is surrounded by the major countries like china india as i said india is the seventh largest country in the world but in within the asia it is the third largest country and first one is the russia and second one is the china since this is the such a big country there are various countries that are bordering with the india there are countries like afghanistan china bangladesh right bhutan nepal the failed state like the pakistan they all of them share their land boundary with the india there are other countries like maldives sri lanka they share their maritime boundary with the india right when india shares so much of boundary there are obviously the conflicts associated with the sharing of the boundary some of the countries may argue that the particular part in india belongs to my country and another country may you know, argue that the particular part in India belongs to that country. This kind of disputes are going on since the boundary of India was delimited. Okay, it was delimited. That means it was formed through the laws or the acts of the parliament. Okay, for your kind information, I would like to give one factual information. India has around 15,200 kilometers of land boundary this is the land boundary okay there are uh, around 7517 kilometers of maritime boundary okay 15007 uh, sorry 2 15200 kilometer of land boundary 7517 kilometers of maritime boundary this maritime boundary can be divided into the main co mainland main coastal land right mainland coast as well as the island coast okay 6100 kilometers belong to the main coastline but the island coastline they constitute 1517 uh, kilometers right this is 6100 kilometer this is around 1517 kilometer island coast as well as the mainland coast this is the brief introduction to indian border right <coughs> now uh, let's come to the major news why we are discussing this boundary of india why we are discussing about the dispute related to india there is a reason recently there, wa uh, there was uh, one news which is related to this dispute. Look into this aspect. The Tamil Nadu chief minister, he was, you know, commenting. He was, you know, uh, <coughs> asking the prime minister of India to do something related to the uh, one island which is uh, located in the maritime boundary between India and the Sri Lanka. This chief minister of Tamil Nadu, he was, you know, telling that to solve the important issue faced by the Tamil Nadu fishermen, the Kachitivu should be retrieved. Okay, this is the Kachitivu Island. Today we are learning about the Kachitivu okay, Island. <coughs> okay, today's discussion is related to <coughs> Kachitivu Island, and one the case which is related to the sharing of the uh, territory or session of the territory or ceding of the ter Indian territory to another country. Okay, Today's discussion is related to Kachitiu Island and the Beru Bari Union case. In this case, Supreme Court gave one landmark agreement. We will discuss about uh, that case also. Okay, <coughs> Now, <coughs> let's come to the today's news. Chief Minister said so that the important issue faced by Tim uh, Tamil Nadu fishermen in Kachitivu Island should be solved and this island should be retrieved or this island should be taken back to India. His second statement was that the Tamil Nadu fishermen should be able to exercise, Tamil fishermen should be able to exercise their rights in their traditional fishing zone. 
Okay, there is an area, as I said, the area that is called as the Kachatiu Island. This is located in between the India and Sri Lanka. See, in, uh, the in and around this island area, the Tamil Nadu fishermen, they are involved in the fishing activities since long time. Okay, since the, you can say since time immemorial, they are involved in the fishing activities. That's why th uh, that activity is called as the traditional fishing activity of these local Tamil Nadu fishermen. He says, this is the right time to take the action in this regard. He says, the present time is the best time to retrieve this island back to India. Because right now, the, uh, uh, Sri Lanka is going or it is facing a lot of economic troubles. This chief minister is you know, finding one opportunity in the, uh, uh, in the trouble of the Sri Lanka and he is asking, we should you know, uh, expedite, we should you know, uh, enhance our action to retrieve the island back to India. He is also tells that I am duty bound to remind the Prime Minister about this. Recently, the Prime Minister uh, involved in a program uh, in the Tamil Nadu state. While the Prime Minister was in that program, the Chief Minister made these statements to retrieve the island back and give the Tamil Nadu fishermen their traditional rights to fish in the local waters. Okay. This is what was in the news recently. Now we will analyze this issue involved in this news article. Okay, this issue is re related to the Kachetivu Island. What is this Kachetivu Island? It's a small uninhabited unhi island in the Park Strait. It is uninhabited. That means this island does not have any of the residents it is free from human settlements it is free from human beings on that island nobody is staying there then it is a disputed territory between india and sri lanka this island being located between the boundary or the maritime boundary of india and sri lanka there is a dispute related to this issue uh, island that dispute is between sri lanka and india then geographically this has the size of 285 acres or 1.15 squ square kilometers. This is the very small island. If you look into the area, it's very, very small island. But with respect to the resources, with respect to the uh, fishing activities, this has the lot of significance as well as culturally. On this island, one church is located. So people from Sri Lanka as well as the India, they go there and they celebrate some of the festivals on this island. Because of that shrine or the church, this island has some cultural significance also, right? This is located on the Sri Lankan side of the maritime boundary. This, Though this is the small island, it has cultural significance as well as economical significance. But this island belongs to Sri Lanka. There were some agreements between India and Sri Lanka. Through those agreements, India has given this island to the Sri Lanka. Now it completely belongs to the sovereignty of the Sri Lanka. Okay, remember that geographically, geographically it is now within the maritime boundary of Sri Lanka. Now just look into this map, then you can be you, are, you will be easily. Uh, able to identify the location of this Kachitivu island. This is Indian mainland. This is the island of Sri Lanka, the country of Sri Lanka. Between these two land masses, there are some water bodies. No doubt, this is the Bay of Bengal Sea. This is the Park Bay, right? This area is the Park Bay. The narrow strip of water which divides pa Sri Lanka from India, that is the Park Strait, right? Though it divides the two land masses of Sri Lanka and India, it joins the two water bodies called the Bay of Bengal and the Park Bay. They are joined by Park Strait. South of this Park Bay is the Gulf of Manar. Okay, again it is located between India and Sri Lanka. This is the Gulf of Manar. Okay, this is the geographical setup of this region or the area between <coughs> Sri Lanka and India. Okay, now within this area we have to locate where the Kachitivu Island is located. Kachitivu Island is located in this area. Which is this part? Can you name? This bridge are the small group of islands though which join the India and Sri Lanka. It is called as the Adams Bridge or in India traditionally we call it as the Ram Setu. This is the Ram Setu or Adams Bridge. East of this Adams Bridge is located the Kachitivu Island. Okay. <coughs> It's very nearer to the 
Park Strait or it is very, very near to the northern part of Sri Lanka, right? Again, it is also very near to the uh, Rameshwaram, right? It is east of Rameshwaram or it is east of Adams Bridge or the east of Ram Setu. This is the location of Kachitivu. Many of the Indian fishermen are going there, especially the Sri Lankan fishermen, they are going and they are entering into uh, this area and they are traditionally fishing in this area. See, if you look into this map, again, there is a red dotted line between India and Sri Lanka. This red dotted line is nothing but the international maritime boundary. This Kachitivu island is located, say, in this area. That means it is south of this maritime boundary. Uh, that means it completely belongs to the control of Sri Lankan government. Okay, This is about the geographical setup and the location of the Kachitivu island. <coughs> Now, we have to look into the historical perspective related to this island. What was the history that has led us to this point? That historical perspective will, will give us some brief, brief background related to the present dispute between India and Sri Lanka. Now, the Kachitivu island was formed due to the volcanic eruptions in the 14th century. According to the geologists or the geographers, it has been found that this island was created in the 14th century through the volcanic activity. For your information, all the, uh, the islands which are located in the Bay of Bengal, uh, they are uh, Andaman and Nicobar islands, right? These islands are volcanic in origin. Most of these islands are volcanic in origin. But the islands which are located in the western part of Indian uh, peninsula, that is Lakshadweep islands. Lakshadweep islands are coral in origin. Okay, but this Kachitivu island is volcanic in eruption. It was formed in the 14th century. But earlier, it was owned by the Rama, Ramanath kingdom of Ramanathapuram. It, in Tamil, it is called as Ramnath or Ramanathapuram or Ramanath is also called as Ramnath. Ramnath kingdom, it was you know, located in the Rameshwaram or Ramanathapuram. This kingdom controlled or it, has the, it had the power over the Kachitivu island. But when the British became the territorial power, they, just, they came to India as the commercial uh, organization, as a commercial company. But because of their involvement in the political affairs of the India also, they became the territorial powers. Once they became the territorial powers, they started to you know, exercise their control over the Indian land. Now, when they became the territorial power, they established the Madras presidency. Okay, This Ramanath kingdom, came under the control of British rule. Okay, When they established the Madras presidency, this Ramnath kingdom came, came under the direct control of British rule. Now, this island was recognized by Ceylon as part of British India. When uh, the British started to rule, when they were the supreme power with respect to the military or with respect to the uh, taxation system and all, they were the superior powers on the Indian land. When they were the ruling India, Sri Lanka, during that time, Sri Lanka was called as the Ceylon. Okay, this is the older name of Sri Lanka, that is Ceylon. This Ceylon recognized this Kachitivu island as the island belonging to the Indian land. That is, it belongs to the British government in India. Okay, however, in 1921, both Sri Lanka and India laid claims to the Kachitivu for fishing and dispute remained unsettled. In 1921, what happened? Sri Lanka, though it earlier said that this island belongs to the British government in India, but in 1921, it said it changed its stance and now it started to tell that it also has some of the rights over the Kachitivu island and I also want to uh, I mean, exercise my rights or the fishing rights over this island. From 1921 onwards, this dispute started to arise. Now it has become unsettled dispute till today. Okay. Now, India and Sri Lanka Maritime Boundary Agreements. This dispute is there. India got the independence in 1947, but the dispute arised in 1921. Still, it is continuing. But there were some of the efforts by the government of India, as well as by the government of Sri Lanka, to settle this dispute amicably. Now, let us look into the efforts made by both the governments. That means they involved in some of the agreements. Now, let us study what are these agreements. Okay. Uh, these agreements were signed during the period of 1974 
टू नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सिक्स ओके दिस इज द पीरियड ड्यूरिंग दिस टू इयर्स पीरियड ऑफ टाइम द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड श्रीलंकन गवर्नमेंट दे साइंड फोर अग्रीमेंट्स ओके द फर्स्ट अग्रीमेंट इट वॉज साइंड इन द ईयर This agreement was regarding the maritime boundary in the waters between Adams Bridge and the Park Strait, right? Adams Bridge and east of Adams Bridge is the Park Strait. This agreement in 1974 it settled the dispute related to this uh, the area which is you know east of this Adams Bridge that is Park Strait. Then rest of the three agreements they were signed in the year 1976. first major agreement in 1974 after gap of 2 years in 1976 again the both the governments they signed three more agreements okay the 1976 agreement that is the second agreement it defined the maritime boundary in the gulf of mannar and bay of bengal see with these different agreements they are settling the disputes in different you know location of the waters if this was related to adams bridge and the back uh, uh, park strait second agreement was related to the uh, gulf of mannar and bay of bengal third agreement was related to the the trial junction point in the gulf of mannar this gulf of mannar it is south of park bay right in this area uh, the maldives also shares some of the uh, rights right the 1976 third agreement was uh, it it was among india sri lanka and maldives but the fourth agreement again it was between only india and sri lanka uh, it it was related to extending the mo maritime boundary in the gulf of mannar again uh, in this second agreement they settled the some of the disputes again now through fourth agreement now they will extend the uh, maritime boundary in the gulf of mannar through some mechanism they extended the gulf of mannar's you know uh, rights over the gulf of mannar these are the brief informations related to the four agreements signed by india and pakistan let us continue sorry india and sri lanka these were signed by the prime minister of india okay during those times during 1974 and 1976 the prime minister of india was indira gandhi she was the prime minister of india but at the same time sri lanka was under the uh, president ship of sirimavo bandari nayake she was the sri lanka's president these agreements were signed by indian prime minister and sri lanka's president indian prime minister was indira gandhi and sri lanka's president was sirimavo bandari nayake the agreements marked the international boundary between india and sri lanka no doubt these agreements were related to the boundary settle, uh, dispute settlement they clearly established the maritime boundary don't confuse these you know agreements are not related to the land boundary they are related to the maritime boundary now in this agreement what was decided indian fishermen were only allowed to use the island okay this agreements these agreements said that indian fishermen they are allowed only to rest to dry the uh, fishing nets and they can participate in the annual festival of saint anthony's church these were the three you know uh, <coughs> rights given to the indian fishermen but indian fishermen they were not allowed to fish in the area around the kachatiwu island this is the major component or uh, in the these agreements indian fishermen allowed only for resting in the island they can go and they can rest on the kachatiwu island they can dry their fishing nets or they can uh, take uh, uh, participation in the saint anthony's festival but they were not allowed to fish in this area okay then these treaties were necessary to facilitate law enforcement the there was a problem related to the law enforcement indian you know fishermen was entering into the sri lankan waters sri lankan uh, fishermen were coming into the indian waters but how to enforce the indian laws on the uh, sri lankan fishermen and sri lanka was also confused how to enforce the laws on the indian fishermen to avoid these kind of conflicts to make the proper boundary between india and sri lanka uh, okay they established these agreements or through these agreements the boundary was established they wanted to properly manage the resources this maritime boundary will be having or the maritime area it will be having lot of resources like mineral resources will be there oil resources will be there 
right to exploit these resources properly the boundary settlement was you know necessary to make these you know uh, uh, arrangements properly to enforce the laws or to manage the resources very well and to avoid the possible conflicts the four agreements were signed okay in 1974 uh, agreement ceded the kachitivu to the sri lanka this is the major you know component among all these provisions of the agreements one was indian fishermen they were not allowed to fish in the sri lankan waters that is the area around the kachitivu island because kachitivu now belongs to the indian sorry sri lankan waters indian fishermen cannot go into the sri lankan waters right by that uh, agreement indian fishermen were not allowed to go into the kachitivu island and fish around it one provision second this kachitivu island was ceded to the sri lanka that means earlier in the british time kachitivu island belonged to the indian government even the ceylon or the sri lanka also accepted the sovereignty of india on the kachitivu island but now what happened in the 1974 India ceded this island to the Sri Lanka through the settlement of the boundary dispute. Now Kachitivu went to the control of Sri Lanka. Now this agreement, these agreements were signed by the then Prime Minister of India. Okay, this is over. Sorry, Prime Minister. Then the Prime Minister of India was Indira Gandhi. Then Sri Mao Bandari Nayake. Oh, I think this slide is over. Now, three agreements in 1976 were finalized. Okay, I said first agreement was related to the 1974. It is first agreement was signed in 1974, but the rest of the three agreements they were signed in the year 1976. But if you look into this year, you can guess what was happening in Indian political uh, system. This is the year in which India was experiencing the emergency uh, issue, right? F emergency in India was imposed by the then Prime Minister in 1975. This emergency was in operation till the year 1977, right? For two years, Indian democracy faced some of the difficulties. During this time only, the Prime Minister of India, you know, assigned these agreements, especially the three agreements in the 1976. Without consulting this is very important the prime minister did not consult the parliament also the prime minister of india did not take the consideration of the state government also this issue is related to the tamil nadu fishermen the prime minister would have taken the consult of the tamil nadu before making these agreements but the prime minister did not take any you know consults or it, it, she was not concerned about the opinions of the tamil nadu this has you know created some of the issues in the minds of the tamil nadu fishermen as well as the tamil nadu political leaders however the in Though these agreements were signed, though Indian fishermen were not allowed to fish in the Sri Lankan waters, but what happened? Indian fishermen continued to trespass the Sri Lankan water, searching for better catch in the area. Though they were not allowed, but still illegally, they Indian fishermen were going around the Kachitiu island and they were fishing the uh, fishes here. Fish and the aquatic life in the Indian continental shelf depleted. What happened because of the some pollution related uh, issues or increased fishing activities of the Indian people, the fish harvest in the Indian continental shelf was depleted. Now, if the fish harvest is you know very less in the Indian uh, continental shelf, what has to do? What has to be done? The Indian fishermen have to go further deeper into the oceans, right? Now, Indian fishermen started to go deeper and deeper into the oceans because of this. Now there was increased presence of Indian fishermen around the Kachitiu island. Now, during the same time, the, I, I mean, after the emergency was over, the Sri Lanka started to experience some of the civil war type of situation. This civil war was created by the one organization called Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. This was created in the year 1976. They were fighting for the separate Tamil identity in the Sri Lanka. They wanted to establish their separate province within the uh, Sri Lankan territory. 
this fight was you know ongoing till the 2019 from 176 to 2009 these liberation tigers of tamil elam they were involved in the fierce battle with the government of sri lanka there the indian fishermen were taking the advantage because the government was confused with the the troubles created by the ltte the sri lankan government order the sri lankan citizens not to venture into the uh, waters because the northern part of the sri lanka was controlled by the ltte they were you know uh, these ltte people were pro india because they were the tamil origin people they they were favoring the tamil people also they allowed the tamil nadu people to water in the Uh, park bay but they were not allowing the sri lankan people to water in the park bay this was the situation but the indian people indian tamil fishermen took this advantage and they increased their fishing activity in the region but in the 2009 the civil war will end right it ends in the 2009 the ltte was dismantled now what happens sri lankan government will take the stronger steps now so far because of the ltte trouble it was not able to take proper control now the government of sri lanka will take stringent actions it will increase its security in the maritime area now indian fishermen they were properly controlled they were not allowed to venture into sri lankan water if the indian fishermen entered into the maritime boundary of sri lanka they were arrested there was increase there was increased you know arrest of the indian fishermen now aftermath of the war that is the sri lanka increased its guard in the maritime boundary when indian fishermen crossed the boundaries the arrests were followed there was increased number of arrests then now what happens there was demand for talks for retrieval of the kachitiu island now this island will come into picture the tamil people especially in the tamil nadu assembly the leaders started to demand the central government to retrieve the kachitiu back to indian land this was followed in the tamil nadu now the sri lankan government claims that depletion of the marine resources on its waters has affected the livelihood of the fishermen see during the civil war in the tamil uh, sorry sri lanka indian fishermen were more and more in the uh, area or the waters near, nearer to the sri lanka now what is sri lanka is telling because of the indian fishermen all the fish resources has been depleted because of the depleted fish resource the sri lankan people are suffering this is the claim made by the sri lanka now after this issue after the uh, signing of the agreements after the end of the civil war and after increased presence of uh, sri lankan military in the uh, park bay what is the stance of government of india what is the stance of tamil nadu state government or what is the stance of the sri lankan government let us look into it in 1991 see uh, after the end of civil war the the, uh, the tamil nadu's political scenario was different i said the tamil nadu political leader started to ask the ask the uh, retrieval of the kachitiu island in their assembly and they started to demand the central government to take back the kachitiu island now in 1991 the tamil nadu assembly as adopted a resolution demanding the retrieval of the kachitiu island this is in 1991 again in 2008 when the jailalitha was the chief minister of the tamil nadu she dragged the central government to the supreme court she you know filed one suit or they filed she filed one case in the supreme court and in that uh, the central government was made one litigant and she appealed to nullify the kachitiu agreements whatever the agreements were made between india and sri lanka this chief minister of tamil nadu she was asking to nullify them that means cancel those agreements because why they had to be cancelled she was telling that they were unconstitutional now the constitution of india comes to picture especially the articles 1 2 3 and 4 india that is bharat it is the union of the states right this is article 1 article 2 3 4 they are related to the creation of the states formation of the states change of the boundary change of the names of the state or uh, acquisition of the territory to the indian land these are all the provisions which are talked by articles 1 2 3 4 okay 
See, according to the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, the action of the government which led to the session of the Indian Territory, that is Kachitiu Island to the Sri Lanka, it requires the amendment to the constitution. According to her, when the Indian Island was ceded to the Sri Lanka, there was no constitutional amendment. Otherwise, there would have been a constitutional amendment. Because of the that lacuna in the uh, action of the central government these agreements are unconstitutional okay in 2014 now this is the these are the two stands of the tamil nadu government that is they want the kachitiu island back to india but what the central government is telling in 2004 for, sorry 14 the central government said something the center informed the madras high court the case was filed again in the madras high court uh, while hearing the case the supreme court sorry the central government said that the Sri Lanka's sovereignty over Kachitiu Island is a settled matter. In Madras High Court, the center tells that uh, in the 1976 itself, the matter related to the sovereignty over Kachitiu Island is settled very well. Now the island belongs to the Sri Lanka. This is the statement made by the central government in the Madras High Court. Again, in the same year, when the uh, Supreme Court was hearing the case, uh, Again, in the uh, uh, Supreme Court, the Attorney General of India, he is the highest law officer in the country. He represents the central government in the Supreme Court, right? He said in the Supreme Court that if you want the Kachitivu back, he is making this statement by you know addressing the Tamil Nadu government. He, he tells, if the Tamil Nadu government wants the Kachitivu back, you will have to go to the war to get it back. Now, this is a very well settled matter. Now, it is under the sovereignty of the Sri Lankan government. If you want to retrieve the Kachitiu island back to the India, we have to involve in the war. War is the only way to get the Kachitiu island back. This is the stand of the central government. That is, central government, now it is fully uh, you know, clear in its thought that the Kachitiu belongs to the Sri Lanka. But what the Sri Lanka is telling, this is the, these two are the Tamil Nadu uh, stands okay these two are the stands of the central government now what does the sri lankan government thinks when the prime minister of sri lanka he was giving one interview to the tv channel that channel was related to the tamil nadu that means it was a tamil nadu based tv channel or the chennai based tamil channel that is tanti tv in that tv while you know giving answers to the interviewer's question the prime minister of you know sri lanka tells us something he suggests that indian fishermen may be shot they may be shot if they intrude into the sri lankan waters that means in the in their thought it is very clear that if any indian fisherman enters into the sri lankan maritime boundary they will be shot mercilessly because it is illegal to venture into the sri lankan waters this is very clear stand of the sri lankan government see if you look into three uh, stands of the different governments tamil nadu it believes in the retrieval of the kachitivu indian government said that it is already settled matter and sri lanka is also very clear that if anyone enters into illegally into its internet uh, sorry territorial water they will be shot dead these are the three viewpoints related to the sovereignty over the kachitivu island now we have to look into the some of the same disputes which created uh, some of the major you know uh, events in the indian political journey the supreme court also involved in this supreme court gave landmark verdict related to the session of the the indian territory to another country now let us look into that uh, india it got independence in 1947 again the part it independence came with the pain of what the partition india also partitioned when india was partitioned the boundary had to be settled to settle the boundary, Indian sorry, the British government, you know, uh, <coughs> created one commission called the Radcliffe Commission. He was the, you know, uh, chairman for that commission for demarcation of the boundaries between India and Pakistan. He he used some of the, you know, um, initiatives to settle the border between India and Pakistan. He said the thanas, thanas means police stations. They were located between India and Pakistan. The distrib uh, he distributed the thanas between India and Pakistan and the boundaries of such thanas would going going to be the ultimate boundary between India and Pakistan. The Thana Berubari. So now we are talking about the Berubari Union case. Berubari it is the uh, area located in the 
West Bengal, okay, to settle the area in the West Bengal, the, the, the Sir Radcliffe said that the Berubari Thana will belong to India. He made one statement while you know giving his final report to the government. Orally, he said that the Thana of Berubari it belongs to India. He said orally, but in the record he never mentioned that the Berubari belongs to India. What happens now? This gave an opportunity to the to the Pakistan. Now Pakistan started to claim that the Berubari belongs to India. Though this Berubari is located in the West Bengal, now Pakistan is claiming over the, uh, no, it's right over Berubari because India was, you know, divided into India and Pakistan, but there was West Pakistan and East Pakistan. This Berubari union case was related to the East Pakistan. Now, Pakistan, you know, came, uh, gave, got more opportunity, it gave, got more strength to argue to get the Berubari to its territory. What happened? There was a agreement between India and Pakistan again uh, in the 1958. Okay, because the Berubari Union created some of the you know uh, dispute between India and Pakistan, the proper uh, settlement had to be there. The proper uh, boundary dispute had to be solved. Okay, to solve the boundary dispute India and pa between India and Pakistan, Nehru and the Noon. Noon is the Prime Minister of Pakistan. That is. Feroz Shah Noon, he was the Prime Minister of Pakistan when Nehru was the Indian Prime Minister. They you know, signed one agreement in 1958. According to this agreement, the territory of Berubari Union was divided and distributed equally. Right? The whole of Union of Berubari, it was divided. Half of that you know, area belonged to uh, India, half of that belonged to the Pakistan. This is the agreement in, signed in 1958. Again, there were criticisms against this agreement. The, after the criticism, the Union government decided to refer the matter to the Supreme Court. Now, though the boundary was settled properly between you know, uh, India and Pakistan, because of the criticism in the India, the central government will now refer this matter to the Supreme Court. Now, the case went to the Supreme Court. What the Supreme Court said, let us look into it. Before going to the Supreme Court's you know, judgment, first we will look into the Article 3 in the Constitution of India. What does this Article 3 tells? It talks about the formation of new states and alteration of the areas, boundaries or the names of existing states. Okay, This is the Article 3, but there are various clauses, a, a clause A, B, C, D and A, sorry E. All these clauses are related to the formation of a new state okay then increase in the area of the any state diminish the area or alter the boundary of any state or alter the name of the any state okay this article 3 talks about change of the boundary change of the name formation or establishment of the state but this article never talks about the cession of the bond uh, any territory to another country ceding or cession cession of territory to another country there is no no mention of cession of the indian territory to another country now berubari union case comes to picture in 1960 the central government referred the matter to the supreme court supreme court gave its you know uh, viewpoint according to article 143 it gave the you know verdict in the berubari union case the actually the main theme was related to whether the preamble is a part of constitution or not in this case okay the supreme court said preamble is not the part of constitution this you have to remember very well that in 1960 this was the viewpoint of supreme court that preamble though it is you know mentioned in the uh, constitution of india it is not part of the constitution again it says the one something related to the article 3 now it says article 3 clause c gives the parliament the power to diminish the state territory but it does not give the power to cede right article 3 never contained the provision related to the cession of the indian territory to another country now the supreme court in its verdict says that though article 3 clause c provides for the diminishing the state territory but it never talks about the cession of the territory now mere existing power under the article 3 is not sufficient parliament has to bring an amendment to the constitution 
the what the supreme court is telling if the government of india has to give the any part of its land to another country there should be an amendment to the constitution this is the view point of the supreme court okay again uh, the provision related to the preamble of the constitution okay in this judgment this uh, the court said preamble is not the part of uh, <coughs> constitution of india but it changes its uh, stance the uh, supreme court changed its uh, viewpoint in case on the bharti case this is again a landmark judgment which created the uh, one you know uh, novel uh, provision uh, in the annals of the indian political system that is basic structure of the constitution this case one on the bharti case talks about the basic structure of the constitution in this case the supreme court says that preamble is the part of the constitution earlier in the berubari union case it said preamble was not the part of the constitution but now in the 73 it is telling the it is the part of constitution again this same view point is reiterated by the supreme court in the 1995 in the lic of india case it again said that preamble is the part of constitution as of now as of today according to the uh, supreme court verdicts preamble is the part of constitution whatever the uh, confusion arises because of the same provisions it mentioned in the different articles if the confusion arises the government can look into the preamble it can take the preamble as a source for some settling of the some of the matters in that way it is the part of the constitution now right again uh, because of the supreme court's judgment that means amending the constitution whenever the part of india was given to the another country the ninth amendment to the constitution was made in the 1960 to give effect to the nehru firoz shah noon agreement in 1958 this was related to the you know sharing the berubari union between india and pakistan right now to share that berubari union the ninth amendment of the constitution was made again in 1969 the supreme court rules that the settlement of the boundary dispute between india and any other country does not require the constitutional amendment constitutional amendment is not required to settle the dispute between two countries if it does not involve the cession of the any part of india but if the agreement if, if the settlement of the boundary involves the cession of the territory there should be the constitutional amendment again the same thing was said by the supreme court in 1960 which was said in the 1960 berubari union case recently we made the uh, uh, amendment to the constitution uh, in 2015 there was a land boundary agreement between india and bangladesh there was the uh, there were exchange of enclaves between india and bangladesh to exchange the enclaves the constitution sorry government of india made amendment to the constitution that is called as the 100th constitution okay in this way whenever there is a exchange of the Uh, enclaves or session of the uh, part of india there should be the amendment to the constitution now let us come to one factual information of today's discussion i mentioned one church that is uh, saint anthony's church it is also called as the saint anthony's shrine church because it is worshiped by uh, indian hindu people also or uh, the indian christians also most of the people come from india and some of the people also come from sri lanka also this church is located in the kachitiwu island okay it is the only structure on the kachitiwu island this is the only building you can find on the kachitiwu island it is a shrine church named after anthony of Pad padua he is the saint saint anthony this saint is regarded as the patron saint of seafarers by the christians christians believe that he is the saint patron of the seafarers that means the people who are venturing into the seas he protects this saint protects the seafarers this was built by the prosperous indian catholic this church was you know uh, built by the indian person that is srinivasa parayachi in 20th century okay the christian priests from both india and sri lanka conduct the worship services and procession according to the agreement between india and sri lanka according to the 1974 76 agreements without visa indian people can go because kachitiwu island is in uh, sri lankan control right without the visa indian people can go there and they can participate in the festival of this saint anthony church okay even without visa sri lankan people can also come and participate in the kachitiwu island this is the major you know um, 
point related to the Saint Anthony's Shrine or the church in the Kachitiu Island. This is all about the Kachitiu Island, its location, what is the historical background for this island dispute. Okay, now you have to think whether there is a constitutional amendment required or not because the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jayalalitha in 2018, she, sorry, in 2008, she said the agreements were unconstitutional because when the agreement was were made when the kachitiu island was given to the sri lanka there was no amendment to the constitution but in the 1960 supreme court said if the indian land or any part of indian land had to be given to another country there should be amendment to the constitution there was no amendment to the constitution now you have to think whether the uh, this act of government of india in 1960 or sorry in 1970s whether it was correct or not whether it was a constitutional or unconstitutional you have to think and you have to comment uh, your viewpoints in the comment box below okay this is all about the kachitiu island and its dispute thank you very much for watching this video